Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We have been talking about instrumental variable. In the previous lectures, what you have seen is the problem of endogeneity. We talked in detail about the simultaneous equation bias problem. We have seen how instrumental variable can come to rescue in all these different cases of endogeneity. And then we actually talked about different types of instrumental variable strategy that we might have to face and we might have to get rid of situations like bad IV or weak IV and we'd rather prefer to have a good IV. Now in this lecture we are going to talk about another property of instrumental variable and that is called identification property. Now identification could be of three types. It could be over identification, under identification and exact identification. Now what, what, what I mean by uh, all of this? Let's begin with the exact identification. Now exact identification is something that you've already seen. So let's say we have one endogenous variable, exact identification. Let's say we have one endogenous variable and that is let's say our x and our instrument is z and x is let's say I have some h, z and some error term. Okay, So I have one endogenous variable and I have one instrumental variable. Okay, So let's say if my number of uh, endogenous variable is m, let's say this is number of endogenous variable and if my number of instrument is equal to let's say n. So then in case of exact identification, what I'm going to have m is equal to n, where n is number of instruments. All right. Now, in this equation, we can see I have one endogenous variable that is x and I have one instrumental variable that is z. And a, you know, uh, basically, my number of endogenous variable is equal to number of in instruments. So this is a case of exact identification. Now, from this definition, it we can clearly make sense what could be a case of under identification and what could be a case of over identification. So when we say over identification, over identification, so in that case, what I'm going to have, I will have more instrument than my endogenous variable. So I'm going to have my m less than n. I have more instrument for uh, my endogenous variables, okay? And under identification, quite obviously, is going to be this, this reverse under identification it is going to be m greater than n all right so an example of over identification let's say i have a variable uh, x and i have let's say two proxy uh, two instruments which one h1 z1 plus h2 z2 and let's say some gamma prime whereas for un under identification i do not have let's say any of this instrument. So if I have an endogenous variable that does not have an instrument, that is that is a case of under identification. Okay. So let us elaborate with uh, all these different cases with an example. An example that you have already seen. Let us think of the example that I previously done where we talked about the price rate is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 wedge rate and then I have an error term up. Okay. Cat small mp. And then we also wrote a wage rate equation and wage rate is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 price rate plus alpha 3 unemployment rate and we had a uw okay so we explained this uh, p and w they are basically endogenous variable in these two equations and if i want to get an equation for p so what i can do i can actually substitute w here from this equation and then what i can get i can get in the equation of p, I can get a u, right? So p could be expressed in terms of up, uw, and capital U. So this uw and capital U are coming from this w, right, which is an endogenous regressor. And up is already present in this uh, regression equation. So from here, since u is an exogenous variable, and uh, since u is not, is not related with the up term so covariance of u and up is going to be zero so basically i can use u as a as an instrument and in this equation i have w and u they are correlated of course so basically covariance uh, of u and w is not going to be zero so that would satisfy the properties of iv now that's all good but if i think of this equation let's say this is equation two and the first one is equation one. If I think about the equation two, so for, for here, if I actually substitute with 
uh, this p from this equation. So what I'll get w in terms of I will get u p and u w right u p and u w. And of course, I will have my u, which is already present in my w equation. So what I'm going, what I'm getting here is up. I'm getting uh, instead of p, instead of p, because uh, that I got from this equation, and I do not have any exogenous variable here. I only have one exogenous variable, which is uh, u, capital U. But that exogenous variable is already present in the model in this equation of w. So I cannot use u again as an instrument right because w is present uh, u is present so not w u is present in this equation on its own right right so if i again use another u so what is going to happen is we are going to see the problem of exact collinearity so we do not want that if same variable is repeated twice in the regression equation we are going to have the case of exact collinearity so we cannot use u as an instrument when u is already present in the regression equation okay so this is a case of under identification. This is a case of under identification. Whereas the first one, the first one here is the case of exact identification. Identification and this is the case of exact identification. Now from here we can actually make sense what could be the case of over identification. So for that let me actually write down another equation. And this is going to be a little change, little variation in equation 2. I will rewrite the equation 2. Let us say I write W wedge rate is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 P alpha 3 W. Let us say now I get a alpha 4 and now I use a money supply rate M. Okay, And now my error term let us say U W prime. Okay, Now what is M? M I claim is an exogenous variable because M is basically the money supply rate. So when I'm basically talking about the money supply rate, what happens to wage rate? So money supply rate is something that is exogenous because it is basically controlled by Reserve Bank of India uh, in, in the context of India and money, when money is supplied in the economy, so let's say money is channeled through different organizations and a part of the money goes in the form of wages. So when money is pouring into the economy, there will be an upward push to the wage rate. Okay, so then it makes sense to have money supply rate in this equation because money supply rate is going to have some impact on the wage rate. Okay, so on that note, we can actually include the money supply rate. Okay, so let's name this equation as equation three, and let's also reduce the screen size a little bit. Now, if I try to now express p in terms of all these error terms and exogenous variable terms, so what I'm going to get here, p I'm going to get u p u w and I'm going to have capital U and I'm going to have M. All right. Now, you see, I have two exogenous variables. Now, instead of one exogenous variable that I had here. Now, which one I'm going to use as an instrument for, for my endogenous variable W, right? So, they're both U and M are indirectly influencing P along with U, W. These three variables are indirectly influencing P because all these three variables are coming through this w root okay so now uh, out of this three of course these two are exogenous variable u and m and both i can actually ideally use as instrument okay now we have seen that both u is a positive is related with w and m is also related with w and because u and m are exogenous they are not related with the error term up so basically, uh, it's, uh, both, both of these variables are going to satisfy my condition of instrument. So which one I'm going to use as IV? Okay, so that is the question we have. And let's see, let's actually write down the beta to IV if I use, use each of these instruments. Okay, so beta to IV, beta to IV is going to be summation. So this is the equation of price. So PI minus P bar. And let's say my first instrument is going to be U which I have been using u i minus u bar and in the denominator my x is w so w i minus w bar and u i minus u bar okay so we already are quite familiar with the expansion of this equation so it is going to be uh, there will be two beta ones so we cancel the beta one so I have let's say beta 2 and I'm going to have 
W i minus W bar into U i minus U bar plus I'm going to have I'm going to have U p i minus U p bar and W i minus U bar okay and in both the cases I'm going to have this denominator let me have one single line here and the denominator is going to be summation of W i minus W bar u i minus u bar. So here just note that I have actually substituted the equation for p i and I basically uh, basically you know cancelled out beta 1 and then I've taken beta 2 out of this uh, summation. So if I you know further uh, basically make it simple so it is going to be beta 2 plus this term here and we already know where we are heading so it is going to be u p i minus u p bar and u i minus u bar and then in my denominator it is going to be summation of w i minus w bar into u i minus u i minus u bar right. So we again take a PLIM and if we take a PLIM on both the sides so it is going to be beta 2 OLS uh, beta 2 IV is equal to beta 2 PLIM of beta 2 is beta 2 and then if I basically multiply 1 by n on both numerator and denominator, so essentially I am going to get covariance of up and u divided by covariance of w and u, capital U here, right. So the denominator w and u, of course we have seen in the previous equation that u is influencing w, there in the regression equation u is a regressor, so that is not going to be equal to 0, so I am fine with this, denominator is not equal to 0. Whereas the numerator we have seen u p and u they are not related so this term is going to be 0 okay. So that means beta 2 i v if we see it is unbiased and at the same time when n tends to infinity I am going to get this uh, you know uh, if I use a PLIM rule so beta 2 is going to converge beta 2 i v is going to converge to beta 2 b, b 2 i v is going to converge to beta 2. So then basically uh, my um, properties of i v is being satisfied okay. Now, so that's basically for u as an instrument. Now what will happen if I take m as an instrument? Let's see that. Beta 2 iv, now this time I'm going to estimate beta 2 iv with m as an instrument. So it is going to be summation of pi minus p bar, this is a price equation and instead of u I'm going to write m i minus m bar, right? And as the denominator I'm going to write my w is the x variable so w i minus w bar and then I going to I will multiply m i minus m bar right. Now we have seen this uh, previous equation so I am not going to repeat the step 2 I am straight away going to step 3 which is basically beta 2 plus summation of I am going to have small u p i minus u p bar into m i minus m bar right and in the denominator I am going to have the same terms as it is w i minus w bar into m i minus m bar. Now if I take a, a limit on both the sides, so basically what I am and basically multiply 1 by n on both numerator and denominator, so basically I am going to have p lim beta 2 i v, so this is basically going to be beta 2 and I multiply both 1 by n numerator and denominator, so I basically get the covariance of u p and m and in the denominator I am going to get covariance of w and m. So covariance of w and m is not equal to 0 because uh, wage rate is related to the money supply so I am fine and here the u p and m they are not related they are not related so I am going to so m is coming from the, the third equation and u p is coming from the first equation so they are not related so I can write this equal to 0. So essentially what is having is uh, b2 iv is basically an unbiased estimator of beta 2 and for large n b2 iv is converging to beta 2 okay. So in both the cases what I am going to see is that they are they're basically satisfying the properties of instrumental variable. So I can use either m or u for the uh, determination uh, for basically uh, for, uh, for uh, or fast uh, regression where I will use them for uh, w instead of w. Now which one to do that, which one to use, so one criteria could be 
we can simply see which one is giving minimum variance and we can use that. But there's another way to sort of identify, uh, you know, like how this both the variables can be used. And in fact, this strategy is to use both the variables, okay? So what do you do instead of using one, uh, you know, uh, uh, instrumental variable, what do you do is we actually use both the instrumental variable, all right? So what I do there is, here what you have done, we, in the IV regression, we simply took one IV, okay? But here what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use two IV, okay? So X is going to be a linear combination of let's say H1, H2, Z2, plus H3, Z3, and let's say some error term. So why I do that? So essentially, this is simply going to be an OLS uh, regression. And I do that because uh, actually this is a better combination instead of just using one IV, okay? And what we, all we need to do is to get a good R square. We have to ensure that we get a good, good R square. And we also try to see other properties of regression satisfies. For, for example, we want to get a less, you know, minimum sort of, we want to reduce the residual sum of square and so forth. So that is how we can actually combine both the instrumental variable uh, when we regress them on this uh, regress for this ex uh, endogenous variable, all right? So this is the strategy and we'll see, uh, with this we'll end this lecture here. So we talked about both the, uh, you know, over identification or under identification problem. So for over identification problem, what do we do? We use both the IVs in the first stage regression and under identification problem, we basically do not have a good IV. So we, perhaps it is a good strategy to find a good IV and when you have exact identification, we are fine, all right? So with this, we end this lecture here. And in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the regression strategy when we use, when we do this fast stage regression and the reduced form regression. And we'll say, we'll see this uh, two stage least square method in the next uh, lecture. So with this, we end this lecture here. Thank you.